Hey, Mike here from learndevops.com.au. And today I want to talk about running a database on Kubernetes. But before we do that, I'd really appreciate it if you joined us on the Discord server. learndevops.com.au, scroll down a little bit, just a tiny bit, and you'll see on the left, want to chat, and then there'll be a little bit of a blurb and then a big button. Just click that, just introduce yourself. You'll be in the introdu introductions channel straight away. Done, simple as that. You can start asking questions, start learning. Let's first of all start by asking the question, what is Kubernetes and should we be running a database on it? So Kubernetes, as you're probably aware, is an orchestration engine. So it was designed originally, it sort of came primarily out of Google's need to scale. Obviously, Google is absolutely massive. They operate tens of thousands of nodes all over the world because they're obviously offering the, they're obviously giving us these services that require huge scale, Gmail, Google search, etc., YouTube, and so on and so forth. These services need just massive amounts of scale. They also need to change very quickly and not only scale, but also change very quickly at that same scale. They need to be able to take traffic from pretty much anywhere in the world, and they need to be very, very dynamically routed. So they started creating a system internally, I believe called Borg, B-O-R-G, like the Borg from Star Trek. And eventually that's what Kubernetes grew out of. And what it allows you to do is spin up lots of servers across globally, completely across the world. And then you can deploy Kubernetes on them. And then you can basically hand it tasks and you can say, Hey, I want to spin this application up in these sort of locations based on these parameters, this Docker image over here with these, these limitations and access to this thing over there. And Kubernetes just makes basically make sure that that happens and it just spreads out all over the cluster and it brings up everything it needs to route traffic to that service for you. It's very, very powerful. It's very, very good at what it does. But it's also very, very complicated, which is in another video why I recommended HashiCorp Nomad. It's better. Check it out. So it's designed to orchestrate Docker containers and essentially it's designed to orchestrate Docker containers that are meant to be stateless. Now that means that the container runs an application that's not really saving data to disk. They're generally not doing that. That's generally not what you do with Docker-based microservices and these kind of architectures. The problem is, is that a database is a stateless application by literal definition of being a database. It literally stores data on disk for you. So should you run that in an orchestration engine, which can spin, certainly spin the application, the database up for you, whether it's MySQL, whether it's Postgres, Oracle, probably even MS SQL, but it's designed to spin them up, assuming that they're stateless, but you've got a database that is completely stateful. So should you actually use it for that? Now you can, but the answer is pretty much no. You shouldn't be using Kubernetes to manage a production multi sort of replicated database for you. So if you're going to take MySQL, you're going to take it, you're going to create a master slave component, master running on one node, slave on another, you're going to have replication between them. That it look that is possible. It, there's certainly nothing stopping you from do that from doing that. And if you look at something like I think it's called Vitus, is it V I T E S S? That's a MySQL branch, I believe, or a, or a MariaDB branch. That's sort of a bit more Kubernetes native and a bit more cloud native, and that's designed to be sort of easily sharded and things like that. But still. Kubernetes was aimed at looking at stateless applications. So should you be running a database on it? And I think the answer is just clearly no, because you're not really spinning up a database and then immediately upgrading it an hour later and then upgrading it and then upgrading it. Kubernetes is designed for spinning up containers that are an application that's at like version 0, 1, 0, and then it's at 0, 1, 12 two days later, or even 12 hours later, or even two hours later. And it's just constantly being iterated on. It's going through a CI pipeline, it's constantly being redeployed all the time. That's the literal definition of continuous delivery, just continuously delivering, integrating changes, testing them, and then delivering them just constantly and constantly and constantly. That's what Kubernetes is really, really good at. It's also what things like Nomad are really, really good at, just continuously deploying these things for you. But the thing is you don't, I mean, think about that. Do you put a database in a continuous development pipeline? No, like, why would you do that? So what are the better options? If you can't, if you're not interested on Kubernetes, what are the better options? Well, this is where you just basically spin up either raw compute. So again, let's go back to our MySQL example, two EC2 instances, MySQL, MySQL, same different subnets, different availability zones. If it's AWS, for example, plant them in there, create a link between the two of them, whether it's a transit gateway or they're in the same VPC or separate VPCs and then create replication. You just have raw compute on there and you manage that. Or of course, if you've got the cache to throw at it, then you're looking at RDS, AWS RDS, or some, some, some form of managed SQL components or service so that you just spin them up. It all works. You tell it to be replicated. It all handled in the background for you. And then you point your containers 
at that database. So that is the better option. And the answer is basically, in my opinion, no, you shouldn't. Head on over to learndevops.com.au. Join us on the Discord if you have, have any further questions. Thank you very much. I hope that's been helpful. Very nice.